Hi, everybody. It is August 22nd, 2019. U.S. created half a million fewer jobs since 2018 than previously reported. New figures show. And Trump is still claiming that the economy is doing well. It's doing fabulously. And yet, he is also saying things that completely contradict him, like, only 24 hours later, it's quite amazing what we are living. Hiring doesn't appear to have gotten big boosts from Trump tax cuts. Turns out hiring wasn't nearly as strong as in 2018 and early 2019 as the government initially reported by about a half a million jobs. Well, we have to ask, why is mainstream media suddenly turning in a direction opposite than what they were saying for two years? How beautifully the economy was doing? They going right along with Trump. Oh yeah, Trump uh, gets attacked by the mainstream media all the time, Carol. Can't you see that he's the real deal? No, I can't. I see a staged play because they never uh, attacked him on the economy. They, mainstream media, didn't speak the truth about the economy, nor did they speak the truth about the wars. They were all on the side of Trump when he was talking about Venezuela and Syria and all the other wars and the economy. Well, let's... Uh, I'll just tell you where this is heading. The real reason why the media is suddenly admitting to the recession threat. So before I get to this really good article, Brandon Smith, um, if you don't know about Brandon Smith, you might want to come over here to altmarket.com and check out his articles. The reason why I like Brandon Smith is because he connects a lot of dots. Connecting the dots. Everything is connected. So let's also just take a brief look at our economy. 42% of Americans say they can't afford vacation. Consumer goods prices rise most since 2012. This is the worst I've seen it. Recession imminent as RV industry crashes. And I have posted many videos on, well, manufacturing is not doing what Trump says it's doing. Trucking, crashing. A whole lot of industries crashing. A total failure. Homeless crisis in progressive cities reaching fever pitch. Homelessness is rising, skyrocketing all over our country. Why? Our economy is doing beautifully. Oh, because so many of those homeless are drunks and alcoholics. No. Stop. Stop. Yeah, it's like endless. You hear these judgments. There are so many people who are not drug addicts, not alcoholics. They can't find work. That's why they're homeless. Delivery robots set to invade college campuses this fall, which means more people will be out of work. Bankruptcy filings rise among U.S. energy producers. One of the largest too big to fail banks in America boldly declares, boldly declares that the wheels for a slowdown are in motion. Sounds kind of deliberate, don't you think? Not even one of the biggest banks in the entire country is, op is now, I'm sorry, I said not, now even one of the biggest banks in the entire country is openly admitting that a slowdown is upon us. Well, a whole lot of people were writing about, posting videos, the slowdown didn't just occur. It has been happening. Global, the global economy 
slowing down. That's been happening for a very, very long time. Over the past week or so, the mainstream media has been filled with chatter about the possibility of a recession and what that would mean for the Trump campaign in 2020. Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley. The wheels for a slowdown are in motion because Morgan Stanley, the central banks, the, the, the bankers are in control of the economy. They deliberately manipulate the economy. So, is it a surprise that it's Morgan Stanley? No, because Morgan Stanley is part of the uh, power base that turns the wheels. A catastrophic trend in Maine, a shortage of caregivers. Hey, middle class, the housing crisis is coming for you next. The housing crisis for the middle class has already been felt. When you see articles like this, it means that the crisis is only going to get bigger, bigger, affecting more and more in the middle class. And the middle class is dying out rapidly. Farmers hit back as USDA chief mocks those harmed by trade war as whiners. Don't you love how compassionate our country is? How reality, how fact-based our country is? Our federal agency heads are quote-unquote leaders and the majority of the American public. Oh, you're just a whiner. You're a whiner? You're a complainer. You're comfortable. You're living your life. Still not so much affected by what has been going on. If you're calling people, especially farmers, whiners? Whiners? This guy should have been ejected out of the USDA for saying just that. Ah, but no, no. So, what else do we have? Just for farming, USDA staffer threatened during Midwest crop tour in signs of farmers mounting stress. Farmers are getting angry. Why? Because they are being destroyed. President Trump's hint that the Department of Agriculture might authorize another tranche of bailout funds for American farmers wasn't enough to quell their anger. No, because they're whiners, right? I just posted a video on those bailouts for the farmers going to the wealthiest corporate farming as well as city slickers. That's right, lobbyists and people who don't even work on farms. That's where the bailout is going. So, is it a surprise to me that farmers are getting angry? No. But, well, a whole lot has reached a fever pitch in our country. And people are getting angry that they're getting screwed. Because in what Bloomberg described as a sign of rising tensions with the farm community, staffers from the USDA's statistical service was pulled from a popular but privately run Midwestern crop tour after a government employee was reportedly threatened. People don't like to be screwed. And you know what? People do have a breaking point. And a whole lot of Americans have been brought to that point. Economists flee agriculture department after feeling punished under Trump. Trump, who loves the farmers. 
Economists <clears throat> in the Agriculture Department's research branch say that Trump administration is retaliating against them for publishing reports that shed negative light on White House policies spurring an exodus that included six of them quitting the department on a single day in April. The Economic Research Service, a source of closely read reports on farm income and other topics that can shape federal policy, planting decisions, and commodity markets, has run afoul of Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue with its findings on how farmers have been financially harmed by President Trump's trade feuds, the Republican tax code rewrite, and other sensitive issues, according to current and former agency employees. Sonny Perdue, well, the farmers are just whiners. A continued decline under Trump's watch in farm income, which has dropped 50% since 2013, rural voters were the crucial source of support for Trump in 2016. Same old, same old, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. We keep doing the same, expecting different results and these guys, it does not matter if Trump was not a politician. These elite, psychopathic, narcissistic, sick, twisted, deranged individuals, Trump included, you really think they care about ordinary Americans. My God. You know, it's remarkable. Remarkable, and it really is remarkable right now, considering all of the evidence that shows that Trump is working for his own group, the elite, working for the bankers, and taking your tax dollars and giving it to the most wealthy. So for anybody supporting this guy at this point, yeah, I'm sorry, you are complicit with the suffering that continues to go on in this country with more and more Americans going over the financial cliff. And is it only me saying this? When you have an awful lot of people coming out now uh, using language that shows how passionate they are about Trump and he is not who the Trump supporters think he is. Um, when you have so many people who are writing, posting videos on who Trump really is, then one would think that the Trump supporters would kind of step outside the matrix a little, take, take another, you know, view of what is really going on here. But no, no. Uh, somehow that's just, I guess, too much for them. ERS researchers presented a paper at the Economic Conference in early 2018 that indicated the GOP tax overhaul would largely benefit the wealthiest farmers generating negative press coverage that staff members said irked senior officials at the USDA. Purdue stunned members of the roughly 300 member research service by announcing plans to bring ERS under the control of USDA's chief economist who reports more directly to the secretary. Hey, get that truth under our control so we can continue to call farmers whiners and not report the truth. Just continue to report the lies. Great idea. Members of the agency were also caught off guard last summer when Purdue's office issued an internal memo, memo directing ERS and other research branches to include disclaimers in their peer-reviewed publication stating 
that the findings were preliminary and should not be construed to represent any agency determination of policy. Bring the truth under the control so it can be disappeared and the lies continue. You think this is not happening in the Trump administration as well? These people are so... They have absolutely no empathy. None. They don't care about ordinary Americans. They do not care about the suffering that is taking place. These are sick, twisted, deranged psychopaths, narcissists. And I can't believe that there are still Americans who actually believe that this guy is for them. Yeah. Do you have, do, do you not get that these people never get affected by what they do to the people that they claim to love? They still, they eat not GMO foods. They're not affected by the, the saturation of electromagnetic frequencies. I, I'm, I'm really shocked, you know, by Americans who just, just refuse to see what, what's going on here. Midwest farm loan repayment issues high or hit highest level since 1999. Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago on Thursday that detailed farm loans at Midwest banks are having the most repayment difficulties in 20 years. Following six years of falling farm income and rising debt levels and the recent addition of record floods across the farm belt and the trade war, a farm crisis on par to the 1980s could be imminent. I just posted a video with Trump saying it's a good time to be farmers. You want to know how sick that is to say? Uh, all right, well, Powell issues gag order to Fed presidents. Yeah, so shut up, you Fed Reserve Bank of Chicago, New York, St. Louis, all over. Don't tell the American public anything of what's to come. Midwest damage control screwed farmers, prompted emergency Oval Office meeting on Monday. This was posted yesterday. Iowa's Senator Chuck Grassley said that Trump's administration had screwed farmers. Screwed farmers. Um, and a lot of it has now, now has to do with this ethanol gasoline. You can read these articles if you want to know the details. You know, many Americans still face financial instability despite economic growth. What a surprise. Because the their recession never ended. Yeah, Americans, they sure do like their lies. They love to be stuck in a very sick twisted, deranged system. 11 reasons why so many experts believe that U.S. economic crisis is imminent. Let's just take a look at them. Last week, the spread between the U.S. two-year and 10-year yields turned negative for the first time in 12 years. U.S. consumer sentiment just fell to the lowest level 
that we have seen in all of 2019. 74 percent of the economists surveyed by the National Association for Business Economics, Economics sorry, believe that a recession will begin in the United States by the end of 2021. Uh, a recession has been ongoing. U.S. industrial production just slipped back into contraction territory. IHS, Market Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, just fell to the lowest level that we have seen since September 2009. Just like we witnessed in 2008, fear and volatility have returned to Wall Street in a major way. In fact, so far this month, we have already seen the fourth and seventh largest single-day point declines in U.S. stock market history. Total number of bankruptcy filings in the United States has been steadily shooting up, and it rose another 5% during the month of July. Major U.S. retailers continue to shut down more stores, and we have continued to stay on a pace that would break the all-time record for store closings in a single year. On a year-over-year -year basis, U.S. freight shipment volume has now fallen for eight months in a row. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the probability that a recession will happen within the next 12 months is now the highest that it has been since the last financial crisis. President Trump is suggesting that the Federal Reserve should cut interest rates by 100 base points and that the Fed should restart quantitative easing as soon as possible. But uh, <laughs> he claims the economy is doing well. Both of those moves would be considered to be emergency measures that should only happen if a major economic downturn was imminent. Rapidly escalating trade war with China, the two largest economies on the entire planet, engaged in this extremely bitter trade dispute, which I believe is staged, uh, that alone could plunge the entire global, global economy into a very deep downturn. The Trump administration is trying to assure us that everything is going to be fine, yet they're considering pushing for a, an emergency payroll tax cut. Do you get how Trump comes out, the economy, it's so, oh, America's back at work. Manufacturing, it's so unbelievable. I'm so unbelievable. Look at this miracle that I have performed since I've been in office. I'm great. The economy has never been better. So, let's just print more money. Let's do an emergency payroll tax cut. Yeah. You're getting conflicting information from one guy, from the same individual. Uh, the U.S. economy really was born, if it was, booming. An emergency payroll tax cut would make, wouldn't make any sense at all. But if we are on the verge of a very serious economic crisis, then such a move would make perfect sense. You know, Gregory Manorino posted uh, a video just the other day, currency devaluation and negative rates coming. Uh, that's to our immediate future. And he also said, get your cash out of investment banks. He just posted a video. The entire U.S. manufacturing sector is dying by Apple. I still get comments from quote unquote awake Trump supporters who I guess just don't want to consider any information that goes against what they desperately need to believe because they are on that low level of consciousness with this self-centered, they live in this ego-driven, self-centered consciousness.
oh, it's that self-deception that's really hard for people to work on, to understand how they deceive their own self, claiming that they're not self-centered when they are. They want to believe what makes them feel all nice and comfortable. So they too are just living in Disneyland. Delusion of the American people is extraordinary. The real reasons why the media is suddenly admitting to the recession threat. I'm going to read some of this, but even what I've highlighted, I don't think I'm going to be able to read. So I will link below to everything. This is a very good article. As Brandon Smith does write, very good articles. So, the first inclination of a portion of the liberty movement will be to assume that mainstream reports of imminent economic crisis are merely an attempt to tarnish the image of the Trump administration and that the talk of recession is overblown. This is partially true. Trump is meant to act as a scapegoat in this staged play that you live. See, we don't live real life. We live you know, as uh, audience members to a staged play that continues 24-7 every day, every month, every year with the manipulators doing all of the manipulations. So, it's not the big picture. The fact is the pattern of the, the media is following today matches almost exactly with the pattern they followed leading up to the credit crash of 2008. Make no mistake, <clears throat> a financial crash is indeed happening right now. It's happening. Just because you haven't suffered the consequences yet doesn't mean it is not happening. It's happening. And dare I say again, millions upon millions upon millions of Americans have already experienced that crash. So they may just do the boiling frog forever because you know what? It works. And even if they had that shit hits the fan, many people have this idea that Americans are going to suddenly wake up. No, they won't. They will listen to their authorities. They will obey their authority figure. Yeah, you know, yeah. We're already living it. A financial crash, crash is indeed happening right now, just as it did after media warnings in 2007, 2008, and the reasons why the mainstream media is admitting it today are calculated. So you can read this article and uh, go through uh, Brandon Smith's examination of how the media reacted during that lead up to the crash in 2008, and they're now acting the same way. Today, we have a very similar dynamic use of the recession word in the mainstream media and among central banks has been strictly contained for the past several years but now they're speaking it the reality is that if one removes the illusory support of central bank stimulus our economy never left the great recession they've just been pumping this money into printing it out, pumping it in, just to prop up an economy that is already bankrupt. That's a house of cards. The cards eventually 
fall down. Signals of renewed sharp declines in economic fundamentals have been visible since 2016 election. Yeah. Yeah, I have posted a lot of them. A whole lot of videos on this economy. And Trump lying about it. But no. You know, it's funny. People tell me that Oh, you're so negative. You have no hope. I can't stand listening to you. Then get off my channel, please. But, um, when you see, which we all did in 2016, so many of the quote-unquote awake crowd suddenly abandon all of us and jump on that Trump bandwagon and they're still on it a, a, a lot and thank you for leaving the comments saying you voted for him you know and but you see now that he's well same old same old that I'm also getting a lot a lot of those comments lately but there are still those desperate to hang on and there's a lot of them. Um, in the face of so much evidence, I have to wonder what they're thinking, how they think, you know, what happened. Um, we were all on the same page, and now we're we're just getting attacked. Those of us outside of the matrix, you know, it's really. Have they been hit with these frequencies and their brains changed? I don't know. But yes, alarms have been blaring on housing, auto, the auto industry, manufacturing, freight, shipping, historic debt levels, yield curves, farming. Um, it's all over. Media should have been reporting on economic crisis dangers, of course, uh, but no. But why now are they changing? First, it is clear from their efforts to stifle free discussion that they do not want to let the populace know too far ahead of a crash that is coming. And according to the evidence, which I have, well, Brandon Smith outlined in depth in previous articles, central banks and international bankers uh, or international banks sometimes engineer crash events in order to consolidate wealth and centralize their political power. Even further, is it a conspiracy? Absolutely. A provable one. It's not a conspiracy theorist. Well, well, look. Oh, God. Conspiracy goes on all over the place. Please, Americans, please start getting out of your ignorance and your puppet-like behavior, allowing allowing other people to think for you. So when they do finally release the facts, mainstream media, or allow their puppet, you know, the bankers release the facts, and allow their puppet media outlets to report on the facts, it seems that they allow for around six to eight months of warning time before economic shock events occur. In the case of the current crash in fundamentals and eventually stocks, the time may be shorter. Why? Because this time the banks and the media have a scapegoat in the form of Donald Trump. And by extension, they have a scapegoat in the form of conservatives, populists, sovereignty activists. Warning about Trump, Brandon Smith has been doing for a long time, for years. He's been warning Trump is a false prophet for the liberty movement and conservatives in general. Uh, globalists will crash the everything bubble on Trump's watch and then blame all conservatives for the consequences. Trump is not the cause of the everything bubble, nor is he the cause of its current implosion. No president has the power to trigger a collapse of this magnitude only central banks have that power. When Trump argues that the Fed is causing a downturn, he's telling the truth. But when he claims 
that recession fears are exaggerated or inappropriate or claiming the economy is fabulous, he is lying. What he is not telling the public is that his job is to help the Fed in this process of controlled economic demoli uh, demolition. Uh, admissions of crisis in the media are coinciding directly with Trump's policy actions. In other words, Trump is providing perfect cover for the central banks to crash the economy without receiving any of the blame. Trump's insistence on taking full credit for the bubble in stock markets as well as fraudulent GDP and in uh, employment numbers after specifically warning about all of these things during his election campaign has now tied the economy like a noose around the necks of conservatives the tone of warning in the media indicates to me that the banking elites are about to tighten that noose so we have a very divided country now with trump the liberals can't stand the conservatives, the conservatives can't stand the liberals, and no one is looking behind that curtain at the real power elite who is con controlling all of the strings of the puppets in Congress in the executive office. Now they're looking at you, conservatives. This economy crashes and people blame Trump, will the liberal lunatics go after conservatives? Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. The tone of warning in the media indicates to me and to an awful lot of people that it's not going to be 20 21, this could very well take place, and I've been saying 2020, I don't know, um, but it's coming shortly. The possibility of a no-deal Brexit, and still the no-deal Brexit going on in the UK, Germany, Italy, uh, there are so many countries going under. Big banks like Deutsche Bank. Italy nearing political and financial crisis. Europe is about to see its own Lehman moment. The Brexit, in Brandon Smith's view, is a marker for a timeline on when the crash will hit its stride. So everybody is seeking to cover their own asses when the next shoe drops so they can say they tried to warn us and they are conditioning a majority of the public to automatically blame conservatives and sovereignty proponents when the con consequences hit them without mercy. It's coming. Uh, you Trump supporters, well, clearly you are die hard, but it's unfortunate that people are not seeing what is very clear, very clear, very obvious. Trump no different working, and he will be the scapegoat. And Trump, like no other, he doesn't give a shit about the attacks coming at him. And yeah, he can very easily play the scapegoat for the bankers. All links are below.